Hello everyone, my name is Anthony and in today's video is going to be a little different. I'm going to talk about books I recommend if you want to learn C. Now you might ask why should we learn C and is there any opportunities in this day and age to learn C? I thought it was a old language. Most of the most jobs if you want to look for are mostly in the web development side of things, you know, where demand for say javascript or demand for c sharp or android or um what do you say app operating systems um or um, creating apps so where does c fit into today's uh job demands or leave alone jobs but even creating stuff or building stuff and if you are designing or creating anything robotics embedded systems dealing with hardware even writing operating systems if you don't know C um, and its cousin C++, chances are you really cannot advance in the, role in the world of robotics. C is the language you want to use when you're programming microcontrollers. And generally speaking, if you do have a good knowledge of C, you should be comfortable programming any, in, um, you, should be able, you should be pretty comfortable programming in any language. Primarily because C is the abstraction between hardware and a human readable code. Now, I won't go into the details of what C does and what uh, is the usefulness of C and why is it such a powerful language. I'll probably do that in a later video. But today I want to talk about books I recommend if you want to get started in C or if you want to you know, revise and fine-tune certain syntax or certain algorithms or certain ideas that you you know you probably are rusty in and books that could help you you know bring yourself up to speed so if you're getting started I highly recommend this book called an introduction to GCC now GCC is the compiler that compiles C and if you understand how to how the GC, how the compiler works it really gives you an understanding of how you write code. For example, what does a hash header include? What's a linker? What's, a, um, what's an object file? And how does it all compile into creating a binary? This book really explains everything. And it's written, written by Richard Stallman, who, who basically wrote uh, the, the, the GCC compiler. And, um, and even today, the GCC compiler is used almost in almost ubiquitously when it comes to programming and compiling embedded C, whether you're programming an Arduino, whether you're programming uh, a Nordic semi-microcontroller at this point in time, or if you're programming an NXP, it does not matter. Under the hood, GCC has always been used. Um, now, there are other compilers that that might do more sophisticated stuff, but you know GCC is still the compiler to um, that that is used more than, more often than not. So I highly recommend this book. Uh, it's a very small read, and it really tells you, you know, how does a compiler work? Um, what's really happening under the hood? When you click that build command, how does your C code translates into, say, binary code and machine code? And if you, ha and generally speaking, when you are creating new projects, the C dilemma is, you know, link. You'll get compile errors such as, you know, linkers are not uh, found or your header file is not found. This book will explain what those errors are. And it really gives you a detailed understanding of what goes on when GCC or a C compiler is compiling a C language. I highly recommend reading this book. It's a short read. It's not that big, um, and you can use it as a reference. Um, this is this is this book is really you know um, one of my um, go-to books when I have uh, problems on understanding of what's really happening under the hood. Uh, I recommend it. The second book I recommend, if you're learning C, is the C programming language written by the authors who created the C programming language, Brian Kernighan and Dennis Ritchie. Now, Dennis Ritchie passed away around the same time as Steve Jobs, I believe. Uh, Kernighan is still, uh, uh, still alive. This book is literally the gospel of how you program in C. Now, it's, it's got, I mean, it basically explains how you program in C. Uh, it explains things like you know what header files are included how do you start compiling a program what's a pointer 
what what are the different types of operators and types, if else statements. So it basically is a reference manual. If you have a syntax issue and you do not know what's the syntax, this book will really help you get started and programming in C. Um, this I do generally feel that this book you need to be an intermediate you need to be an intermediate user to really get the most out of this book. But but even beginners can at least get a glimpse or understanding of what's really happening under the hood. Now, another less known book that I don't see many people recommend, but especially when it comes to C, the biggest problem with C and compile language is pointers because you have the ability to, you know, uh, store memory and store variables in a particular address and, you know, play with memory addresses like, you know, like very high level programming languages don't allow you to do that. They may, the, the interpreter might be able to do it, but you, when you're programming, you really don't really focus on, you know, where the uh, pointer arithmetic is or where the, you know, how do you access um, an, a value from a memory address? And that's what really pointers are. And how do you go about, you know, manipulating variables when you're dealing with, you know, memory address and stuff? And the book that I recommend is Pointers on C by Kenneth Eric. This book is really the best book when it comes to explaining pointers. I mean, C as a language is pretty straightforward if you're just using if else statements and doing basic for loops. But the real power of C comes when you actually, you know, when you have the capability of uh, accessing memory addresses and start manipulating values using pointers, basically. And this book is really explains pointers in a way that I've never seen any other book explain it. It goes really into detail as, you know, what's happening when you, it's got all these graphs and it tells you, you know, when you, call this program or when you see the syntax what's happening it's so well explained that i really cannot recommend this enough like this is if you have any problems with pointers and this will really make you go from zero to hero <laughs> literally when it comes to pointers your understanding and intuition of pointers will be so strong after reading this book i can't stress how important this has been at least for me when it came when it comes to uh, programming in c Now, when you program in C, there is something called as a makefile. And what a makefile does is um, it takes, it gives you, it basically tells the compiler where to look for header files, where to look for your search path, what's the sequence of compiling, and where do you want to compile. So it gives a lot of instructions into, you know, where and how you want to get your C programming compiled because you might be referencing a file that is not there in a particular path and the make file you, you basically say tell this tell you write in the make file saying you know this are the paths that I want to include and it's a very handy tool if you're compiling at least bigger programs and if you want to understand how make works it's once again written, written by Richard Stallman who wrote the make program um, highly recommend reading this book again this is a reference book if you want to know how to write make so that you can you know compile in a better way uh, this book really explains how to use make under the hood, when you're, whether you're programming um, using Eclipse IDE, whether you're programming, generally manufacturers will tell you, uh, will give you an IDE with everything working. But under the hood, they're all using make. It's not that they're not using make, they're abstracting it from you. But if you really look at the, how your C code is compiling with all the header files, with all the um, linkers and stuff, it is the make file that is doing all the job to tell the compiler where to look for and how to compile. So it's really giving an instructions to the compiler so that a compiler can, can do its job. So make is always is going to be used. And if you want to understand how your program is compiling and what's going on before it compiles, basically how the compiler is able to get all those files and make everything work. This is the book that uh, can explain some of the syntax when you're reading a make file. Another book I have not read completely, but I've referenced it here and there, is Data Structures in C. And this is a book by Noel Kalicharan. And I feel it's a good book because when you talk about, uh, when you, whenever you come to C, there are certain algorithms that are very, very suited for C. Uh, things like linked list, things like, you know, stacks and queues and um, binary trees and sorting and hashing. So and also working with matrices, which is, you know, uh, arrays and stuff. And this book really explains how you can optimize your C program so that it works, uh, so that you can implement certain algorithms. And um, especially when you're looking for a job, 
or even having an even when you look at a code and you want to do some complex arithmetic you'll most likely use some form of these algorithms to get something working you may not know that you're using them but eventually when you really say you want to sort something out or you want to you know create a linked list you'll most likely be using these algorithms whether intuitively or or you know un 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 unconsciously i would say but you'll be using principles of these algorithms this book really explains how you can optimize your um, code so that when you're using these algorithms, you know what you're doing. All right. Uh, it's very well written. It's uh, it, it, it has helped me whenever I you know want to figure out a way to optimize my code. This is a good book to basically reference. Now, the other two books that I want to talk about is uh, related to Linux. When you're doing embedded systems, most likely you will be using a Linux environment. And one of the things that you want to get used to is the command line. And there's so many syntax in the command line. It's, it's really a powerhouse and you, it's kind of like, you know, um, you're kind of like Batman with all the gadgets if you know how to use the gadgets. And if you don't know, you're pretty much clueless as to how do you go about navigating, you know, the world. And Linux without the command line is really a very dull operating system. But once you know how to use the command line, it becomes a very powerful operating system. And when it comes to embedded C, why do you need Linux? Because generally speaking, when it comes to writing code, when it comes to, um, you know, eventually even even installing Linux in an embedded, say, system where um, that's the, it's a lightweight operating system, so it'll probably, it'll, it will work wherever you, um, it'll work because it's lightweight. Things like Raspberry Pi use the Linux command, uh, use the, uses the Linux operating system. This book will help you how to navigate the command line, basically. And um, there's so much, com there's so many commands that to keep track of it is gets imp it gets very tedious in the beginning. But once you start getting used to, you know, what the commands do, you'll realize, you know, how how useful those commands are. And to get started, I highly recommend reading the Linux command line. It's a very useful tool. And generally speaking, when you're compiling in GCC or using make files you most likely are going to use the command line to do it as well. And you'll be using, you know, especially if you're writing in Linux. Windows, if you're writing in Windows, you may not necessarily need this, uh, but though some commands in your work even on Windows. But um, if you're dealing with embedded systems, it's, it's, it's worth mentioning Linux because uh, they kind of go hand in hand. So yeah, this is a book that I would recommend if you are struggling with using the command line. And last but not the least is once again a book for Linux. And this goes into the details of how you create write software on the Linux programming uh, operating system. Now this is very essential, especially when I'm when you're programming embedded systems and you say you're programming, say, a Raspberry Pi, and you want it to do some really sophisticated stuff, you you really want to write programs that are compiling in Linux and you want them to, you know, do certain things um, and the ability to understand what Linux, what the Linux programming environment is and how do you write comp programs that work natively on the, on, on the operating system, this is the book for you. This is one of the most comprehensive books on Linux operating systems and how to write system, how to write uh, system programming for the Linux operating system. So it does not teach you how to write a kernel as such, but it teaches you for example, when you have Windows and you see a software, how do you write a software on Windows? So it's something of that sort. This is the same version, is the same concept of how do you write a software on Linux uh, using things like, um, you know, what all, like memory allocation, uh, file input output, what are processes, what are threads, uh, how do you write a program, you know, that's constantly, that is context switching and how do you, you know, make sure there's race conditions and, and what are the different features that you can, what are the different programs that you can call using the Linux kernel so that you can you can make some make your program work? How do you access files and directories? And it's it's a beautiful book when it comes to programming in the Linux operating system. Now this is a book generally meant for advanced users. If you're just getting started in C, I highly recommend you reading the the first three books that I mentioned. But if you're going more into details as to how you want to, in terms of programming in in Linux, uh, there's no better book than this. Uh, there are a lot of other books related to Linux. I won't go more into the, more into them, but but I wanted to mention in this series because when you're writing in C, you also want to leverage some of the software in 
in the Linux environment. And this book can really help you how to write your code even in a, in a, in a nice fashion, in a much more structured manner, especially when you're writing big programs. It also it helps you how do you it helps you organize your code in a way that's uh, readable, useful, and uh, you know gives you the um, gives you a lot of ideas of how you can improve your C code. All right, so that's all I have for you. Um, so if you want to get started with learning C, which is a very important language when you're when you're dealing with embedded systems, these are the books that I recommend. I highly recommend you to like this video if you like this video and subscribe so that if whenever new videos come, you will be able to be notified. Uh, until next time, thank you so much.